Welcome to Who's There, a show about cloud identity. In the last episode of Who's There, I talked about why Identity Platform is awesome and how to enable it in your GCP project. Today, I'm showing you how to integrate Identity Platform into your iOS app in Swift. If you haven't enabled Identity Platform yet, I recommend you check out the last episode of Who's There before proceeding. You also need an iOS app. In Xcodes, start with an existing app or create a new single view app. And if iOS is in your jam, then check out the Getting Started videos for Android or web, both linked below. All right, with all the prerequisites out of the way, let's get started. In the Cloud Console for my project, I've selected the Identity Platform tab. I previously added email and password authentication. If you haven't added this yet, click Add a Provider and select Email Password. There are lots of other providers to explore, but with today, I'm just sticking with this one. On this Providers page, you see a link in the upper right for Application Setup Details. This pops up a window with brief getting started information. When I click the iOS tab, I see, to get started with iOS, you'll need to register it and add Firebase configuration to your app. Learn more. I click Get Started with Firebase, which takes me to an entirely new console. Some of the information is the same as the Cloud Console, like project name and ID, but then there are all these new tabs down the side that say Develop, Quality, Analytics, and Grow, and the big pop-up in the middle asking about data sharing. If you've used Firebase before, this probably looks familiar, but it's entirely possible you've never even heard of Firebase, let alone used it. Let's talk about what's going on here. Firebase is a suite of products to help you build your app and grow your user base. It includes SDKs for Objective-C and Swift for iOS, Java and Kotlin for Android, JavaScript for web, as well as several frameworks like Angular. There are specific for game SDKs for Unity and C++, and so much more. In fact, I can make a whole series of videos just on Firebase, but fortunately, the Firebase team has already done that. If you're interested in finding out more about any of these SDKs, check out the documentation and the Firebase YouTube channel, both linked below. Now, in many ways, Firebase is the perfect complement to Google Cloud. Very broadly speaking, Google Cloud products focus on server-side solutions like App Engine, Compute Engine, Cloud Functions, Kubernetes Engine, and Cloud Run. And Firebase products focus on client-side solutions like authentication, cloud messaging, cloud storage for Firebase, and so on. I admit that it's challenging to pin down the relationship between Google Cloud and Firebase. So my oversimplified explanation is that Firebase is the way to access some Google Cloud Platform products from a client application. Specifically for Identity Platform, this explanation works well. The Firebase Auth SDKs enable you to access Identity Platform functionality from your client app. With that in mind, let's head back to that Firebase console. The Firebase console automatically opened to our project. Notice this UI indicates that Quick Start is already a Firebase project. When adding Identity Platform to a Google Cloud project, a Firebase project is automatically created. First, let's deal with this pop-up. It's up to you whether you want to check off to use the default settings for Google Analytics data or select Do This Later. Some Firebase products depend on analytics, like A-B testing. So if you decide to incorporate other features, you probably want to enable this. Again, it's up to you. When you click on the project settings, notice the settings are identical to the Quick Start Cloud project. Firebase has basically added some more details and functionality to the Cloud project, similar to when you enable an API or add software from the marketplace. Since you want to add Identity Platform to an iOS app, select Add App iOS. This gives you a window with a series of steps to follow. Keep in mind that the bundle ID you choose needs to match the bundle ID of your iOS app. The app nickname is totally up to you. I won't provide an App Store ID since I don't have one yet, but if you do have one, feel free to add it here before creating the app. I'm now prompted to download a Google Service Info plist file. 
This file informs my iOS app about my Firebase app so I can interface with Firebase products. Once downloaded, add this to your iOS project. Click Next in the console, and it gives the next step. Add the desired pods. So I will be using CocoaPods to add the required dependencies, but you can add the required code without CocoaPods. Check out the guide linked below to find out how to install the SDKs without CocoaPods. OK, initialize a new pod file and then open it. Add the Firebase auth dependency, and then save the pod file. Close Xcode to prevent strange behaviors that can rarely happen when running CocoaPods while the project is open. Then run pod install. Open the created XC workspace. All right, in the project, in app delegate, import Firebase. This smart import will only import the dependencies you need. So you don't really have to import Firebase auth specifically, for example. In the did finish launching with options function, initialize the Firebase app using Firebase app.configure. This initializes the Firebase app using the settings provided by the Google Service Info plist file. OK, you can now use the Firebase auth SDK to sign up, log in, log out, and get user info about an identity platform user. Identity Platform gives you access to many different login providers, including federated identity providers like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. You can enable several login methods for an app, allowing your users to authenticate the way that they prefer. Some login methods may require additional steps, which are listed in the console when you enable that login method. See the documentation below for information on how to implement other login providers. For now, Let's get back to implementing email and password login. Back in the Cloud Console, create a fake user with a test email and a test password. Of course, you can also create a new user from the client, but this is a good way to get us up and running really quickly. See how to create a user in your iOS app following the link below. Back in your iOS app in Xcode, go to the view did load for your view controller call auth.auth.signin, and pass the email and password you just created in the console. This function passes a completion handler with two parameters, an optional auth data result and an optional error. Auth data result is the result of sign-in requests containing both the user and some additional user info. First, I check that auth data result has a value, and if it doesn't, log the error. Otherwise, I can do whatever I need to do with the user. Right now, I'll just log that user's UID. Now, of course, my example thus far is not a complete auth solution. You need a way for users to create accounts, handle password resets, and log out. Each of these functions needs some UI development as well. If you prefer, you can write all this functionality yourself using the Firebase SDKs. The related documentation is linked below. But you also have the option to use the Firebase Auth UI module. This open source UI was created by Auth specialists at Google. It includes all of the views you would need to create an account, log in, log out, and reset password, which you can incorporate in just a few lines of code. And you can override the view controller classes to change the appearance of your login. Whether you make your own UI or use Firebase UI, you will very likely need a way to know the auth status before programming any app actions. For example, you're going to want to check if there is a user logged in before writing to the database. That's where Firebase Auth Listener comes into play. Let's look at how to implement it. I create a function I'm calling listen for auth changes. In this function, I call auth.auth.addStateChangeListener. This function passes a closure with an optional user and optional error. Handle the error if one is found. Then do what you need with this user, like assign the value of a class's user to the logged in user. For the purpose of this example, I'll just log the user email. Then I'm actually going to log out so you can see the state change listener closure be triggered again. I put the code to log out in this separate function here called logout. I run the app, and the console logs show that the user is logged in and then logged out. Congratulations, you just added Identity Platform to an iOS app. Ready to see what else Identity Platform can do? 
check out the Firebase Auth iOS guides, Auth Quick Start Code, and the Firebase YouTube channel. And be sure to subscribe to the Google Cloud Platform channel so you can be the first to know about new videos in this Who's There series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.